Hey folks, we're going to talk here a little bit about tying up your own rigs for fishing for walleye. I'm actually uh, going to show you how to tie up two different systems I really like to use. And uh, one of the things that's kind of fun about this is you can do this all winter long when there's ice out there and it's too cold to get out on the water, get things set up and get ready for the spring when it comes, which we're really short to close to here right now. What I've got here is actually the spinner rig setup that I that I get ready for the season and you can kind of see here, I mean, there, there's there's almost an unlimited variety of the kind of things that you can tie up. These are walleye pops here. These are just macular smile blades with floats. And uh, like I said, there's really no limit to whatever your imagination really wants to do. Here's some Phelps floaters on rigs, different colors. These are some slow death rigs right here. Um, it's limitless as to the, what you can do and it's really kind of fun. Uh, to do this. So I got two basic rigs that I generally like to set up and, I'll, and I'm going to go through and show you how I do those. The first one is actually going to be using a uh, slow death hook and you can kind of see from here the hook's got kind of a funny little kinky bend to it but it works really really well. Uh, you can actually rig up these slow death rigs like this with just a, a bead and just a hook. You can also use this with the spinners and I use uh, a lot of a Maxler product, these little Mylar blades that are from Maxler have quite a variety of different colors and, and combinations you can put together. So that's my first one here is basically to uh, start out with is, is I start out with maybe a four about a five foot length of line leader and in this case I generally use this uh, Berkeley trilene at 17 pound test you can also use the Berkeley fluorocarbon 15 pound test I like to use a fairly heavy line for leader material because you got that spinner kind of working on that line all the time and uh, this isn't a finesse presentation for fishing it's basically you're trolling anywhere from 0.8 to 1.5 mile an hour from the boat and uh, the fish are reacting to the action of these baits. So what I start out with, if I'm going to do the slow death hook, the single hook like this, I'll take this line and I actually tie a polymer knot. And this is where you have multiple options. Now what I do with these rigs here is I'll take a little fluorescent bead. In this case I'm using the kind of a fluorescent green one. And I'll stick that on first. And then I really like to use the little pill floats like this. Um, Stick that pill float on because it helps keep this thing a little more buoyant. And then I'll take another fluorescent bead and stick on there. What I want to do is I want to get enough beads or float or whatever so that when I put my blade on here it keeps it away from the, shank, the hook down here so it's not affecting the, the hookups and the bites. Uh, so that's kind of this. And then from there, if I'm using the uh, Maxler smile blades, I'll simply take a blade like this and just put the line right through the little hole in the center and let it go down and that basically can be one of your rigs just like this. On the other end of the leader here or the snell that I'm using, I'll take a little barrel swivel and again tie that on with a polymer knot and that right there actually makes a rig that's going to catch some pretty nice fish right there. And that's with a slow death hook, a single hook. Um, the next one I'm going to show you here is actually a two hook harness, but that's uh, one of the really great ways to uh, set these up. Now the other thing that I do is I use these little tackle tamers here and once I've got the rig tied up, I'll stick the hook into this tackle tamer and I'll just wind it up so it's nice and neat and organized and I can put it away and uh, it makes for a pretty nice system. So you just put the tackle tamer on the tackle tamer and then wind up the line like so. The other one I really like to do um, is a very similar but it allows you to, to use actual spinners. So if you'll, you'll see here sometimes I'll use things like this which is a little hatchet blade, a silver hatchet blade. It's a uh, Sometimes been extremely effective. This for here is a uh, Northland uh, Colorado spinner, and there's various sizes. You can, like I said, you can experiment with all this stuff. This again is another little Northland number three Colorado spinner. You can also tie these up with little Phelps floaters sometimes. Um, this setup that I'm going to do here now, again, will take a about a about a five foot leader here, 
And this is a two hook harness and it's also a quick change system. So the two hook harness, what I'll do is I'll tie a snell hook. So here I use like a, a number two, like a mustad hook like this. We put the line through, through the eye of the hook and basically hang on to it right along the shank and then basically wrap about eight or ten wraps back as tight as I can. Three, let's see, we got, there's one, two, three, ah, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then just holding that there, I'll, I'll grab the other end of the leader, pull it up back through the eye of that hook, and then just pull this whole thing up. Um, and that creates a, a snell hook right there. Now, what I like with this system is it makes it really, really easy to make it a two hook harness because then I just hey, grab my other end, grab my other hook, run the line through the eye of the hook, like so, and I can move this hook down and I can space this hook wherever I want it. Um, so if I put a, maybe about a three to four inch spacing between my hooks, depending on the baits that I'm using, but I'll set them up something similar to like this, so I get that where I want it, maybe three to four inches, and do the same thing, just taking that line and wrap it around the shank of that hook about eight times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, maybe even ten times. Then grab my tag end of the leader that I'm using or the snell I'm using, put it back through the eye of that hook so it's headed out towards where I'm going to tie up to my bottom bouncer and pull that up. And what that what that makes it is a real nice two hook harness that uh, both those hooks are on there pretty nice and they're spaced apart a little ways, um, works really well. Now the same thing applies here is what we did with the uh, smile blade is we want to keep some separation between those hooks and whatever I'm putting on there. So in this case I'm taking a little orange orange bead, going to slide that on and if you use beads you can use four or five beads. Again I still kind of like these pill floats like this just to give a little extra buoyancy, a little weight to make them not fall quite so quick to the bottom and get snagged up. Put that pill float on, put another uh, bead on. And then in this case, I've got here what's called a quick change clevis. It's a little bit hard to see here, but basically it's, it, it goes on the line, but it's got this little uh, clinch clip thing here that you can actually put different spinners on so you can actually change these out. Um, so this slides on a line like this with that little D, kind of a split ring thing there, goes down to my bait. And then from that point, um, again, I would take a barrel swivel on the other end, tie this on with a polymer knot. Besides making it easy to change these, these things out to kind of swap to see what color or what preference the walleyes might really have, it actually helps reduce some of the line twist. Even though on most bottom bouncers they actually have a snap and a swivel there, this is kind of creates like two swivels. So again, it really helps eliminate the line twist and stuff because you've got this spinner going back there all the time or even the slow death rigs where they're twisting all the time and you want to keep as much of that line twist out as you can. So this is my basic rig. Now this again would be a quick change thing and a lot of times I would just wrap this up and put this in so I keep an assortment of blades in one of the boxes. But the, the nice thing about this is with this, this system, you can take whatever blade that you want to use and clip it onto that quick change clevis just like this and have a real nice, uh, so real nice uh, rig with, in this case, if uh, depending on if the fish were biting and what they're feeding on, um, a lot of times I'll use things like this hatchet blade that's silver if they've been fish feeding on shiners or minnows, whatever, that little hatchet blade sometimes can be really good. Um, sometimes even go into a, a small size little, this is an Indiana spinner here. Um, but it makes it real easy to just swap things out and give fish, again, the option. And what's one of the things about walleye fishing is basically you let the fish tell you what they like. Uh, you experiment a little bit, you'd be amazed at what I've seen over the years 
fish in different places at different times where something as subtle as even the change in the size of that lake can make a big difference between getting bit and not getting bit. So don't be afraid to experiment. This system here works really well because it gives you the option to do that pretty easily and changing those things out. So hope to see you out there fishing and uh, putting a few fish on the table and having a great time enjoying the outdoors with your friends and family. If you've got any questions or need any further information, just stop by any of the North 40 Outfitters stores or check the website at north40.com. Thanks for watching and hope to see you again. Thanks. Thank you.